Hello and welcome to another episode of the Agency Leadership Podcast. I'm Chip Griffin. And I'm Ginny Dietrich. And Ginny, we, we got to do this and so many things. And, and the to-do list is, the, oh. Chaos. 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 Right after this. I'm just, I'm, I'm all crazy. I don't even know what to do today. I just... Too much going on. It's you know how it is. I mean, it's it's the agency world where it's got so many busy, things to do. To busy. Do. Yep. I mean, busy, 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 yep. busy. Yep. Lots to do. Lots of clients. Lots of fires to put out. Yep. But lots it's just it's just the way it is. I mean, you know, it's just the way it is. That's that's how agencies are and always have been and always will be. That's right. Speaking of chaos, here's if a you're cute if you're puppy. watching on video, you will see a dog. Hi. If you're listening, you have no cute idea. Puppy, and... say cute puppy alert. Okay. Chaos. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Anywho, <laughs> I, I think having a dog around my house would be chaos. But <laughs> so here's the problem. You know, agencies seem to wear chaos as a badge of honor. They, yep. they just, they're almost excited to tell you how chaotic things are and how busy they are. And, you know, and, and we just, we, we very casually in talking with other agency owners or with people outside the agency world, even we just talk about the chaos of agencies. And, and I got to tell you, that's not a good thing. And I mean, I used to be one of those people. I used to think, oh yeah, sure. you know, it's just, you know, busy yeah. is good and chaos sure. is great. And it's, you know, yeah. it's just part of the culture. The problem is that chaos is the sign of a problem. Chaos is not something we should embracing, be embracing. Chaos is something that we should be solving. So I'm pulling up your LinkedIn um, post rant. on this because I rant. thought it was really good, which is, it's not a rant. Um, it's a diplomatic it's, rant. Some agencies talk about chaos as a badge of honor, which I agree with. And I think our society is in general talks about busyness as a badge of honor. So it, it leads into that as well. What's the whole hustle um, culture thing? Right? It is. You, know, You're right. you, you, you You're watch right. YouTube video. You just need to hustle more. And look, I, I mean, I am, I am not a good example of work-life balance and all that kind of stuff. I, I, I like to work. I make no bones about it. That doesn't mean that you have to have everybody doing that, that same thing. And just in having that, that sense of care, that that's the only way to function. And unfortunately it's become that. Yeah. And so I think you say, you know, off, this is I, what I really appreciated about the post was this. Often when an agency leader describes the firm as a, quote, fast paced environment that relies on, quote, self starters, what it really means is that the team is overworked and stressed out with the right level of management and mentorship for individual employees. So good. Yeah. And I mean, and we see this. Uh, we saw this recently in a spin sucks community post where right. a young former agency employee was on there looking for career advice and and said i, I don't know what i want to do basically but i know i don't want to be in an agency again yeah because it's and too much it's too much and you know and 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 i hear owners who will talk about yeah well that's that was just someone who couldn't cut it in in the agency world which nope. i feel like i've said before <laughs> me too right yeah. i mean it it but at some point, you need to realize that if you are in that kind of environment, you are not getting the most from your team. We talk about team as, you know, our, the team's our best asset. You know, the team's our differentiator. Well, then, you know, why are you subjecting them to this kind of fast-paced environment and, and talking about the chaos as if it's a good thing? Instead, you should be sitting there and saying, why is it so fast-paced? Why does someone have to be a self-starter? Why... Do we accept that you just have to work overtime all the time? These are not good things. These are pro fundamental problems in any business, whether it's an agency or otherwise. And so you need to be sitting there and saying, rather than embracing the chaos, what's causing the chaos? What is the root cause of it and how can I solve it? Is it that I'm not pricing correctly? Is it that I'm not staffed correctly? Is it just that I don't have realistic expectations, right? And I'm, I've been guilty of that one a lot over sure. the years that, because yeah. I mean, owners think everybody's gonna be just like them. And yep. so, you know, if I can write an op-ed in 20 minutes and I can, yeah, I used to want to hire people who could write an op-ed in 20 minutes. Guess Correct. what? There aren't a whole lot of people who can write op-eds in 20 minutes, right? Yes. There aren't a whole lot of people like me who would have a colleague and we'd have a race to see who could write an op-ed faster. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> 
Because <laughs> those are the crazy things that we would that. do. I love that. Not everybody is like that, nor should everybody be like that. And we shouldn't be pressing for our team to, I mean, we don't, we, we still want to press for excellence. We still want to get, you know, I'm not telling you to settle. I'm not telling you to get bad employees, but at the same time, be realistic in all of your expectations. Yeah, I think, you know, one of the things that especially the younger generation is really good about, and this leads into the the conversation we had in the Spin Sucks community, but the, I think, you know, our generation was just like grin and bear it and, and push through and we don't have mental health issues and we don't have, we don't need to take time off and we don't have families totally separate. But this younger generation is like, no, like there are things that I have to tend to as a human being and it's not all work all the time. And so as owners, we have to look at it and we have to say, okay, how are we providing the best environment for our team? And to your point, it's not to overwork them and burn them out. It's to and pre provide chaos. It's to say, okay, if you're working, I actually just had this very conversation with a, a an agency owner client of mine last week where she said, somebody's feeling burned out because she's spending about three fourths of her time on one client. Okay, so if that's the case, what do we need to do both with the client and with the colleague to ensure that, you know, first of all, they're not paying for three fourths of this person's time. So how, what do we need to do? And we talk through the steps to, but that she needs to do with the client to set expectations, but also to work with the employee to ensure that she's, she's spending more like a quarter of her time with this client versus three fourths of her time. But those are the kinds of things that create the chaos and create the, the burnout and all these things. And the younger generation is not going to put up with it. They're just going to be like, okay, peace out. And just like the conversation in the spin sucks community, I think she'd been in an agency for only 18 months and was like, this is not for me. And it was because it was chaotic and she burned out in 18 months. Right. Well, and, and I mean, look, this is, this. I, I don't necessarily think, I wouldn't attribute as much of it to the, you know, the younger or newer generations. I think this is, this has always been there. It's just that most of us who are making this observation have shifted where we sit. Fair. Um, yeah. you know, but, but if, if I think back to 20 or 30 years ago in the agencies that, that I was either working in or was very familiar with, you know, there were plenty of, of younger people who were like, this is crazy. You know, I, I don't, I, I can't have any kind of a social life because, you know, we all, everybody sits there and, and basically it's a contest to see who can sit at their desk, desk the longest. That's right. Right. And, and yep. if you, if you left, you know, any time <laughs> during the five o'clock hour, you were like, whoa. You're leaving early today, huh? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and, <laughs> yes. and the norm was six, seven, eight o'clock at night. And yes. and that was normal because yes. chaos was embraced. Yes. And and I, I that just it didn't make sense then. It doesn't make sense now. I think employees know that they have more leverage today. That's right. Than they did in the past. Yes. Combination of reasons, you know, the labor market, the fact that with most businesses, uh, professional service type businesses being at least hybrid, if not remote, means that you have a lot more options. You know, you don't have to be just looking for someone that's an easy commute to you, which dramatically limits your potential places of employment. So, you know, it really has shifted the dynamic as far as being able to act on mm -hmm. the concerns that have always been there. And so, I, I mean, I think agencies need to be paying attention to this. And, and yes. one of the things that I did recently was I created something called the agency health assessment, basically a 30 point, almost like a car tune up inspection checklist kind of thing. And one of the questions in there is effectively, do people in your agency regularly work overtime? Because they shouldn't. It shouldn't, it probably shouldn't be never, right? Because, you know, you want to have some urgent projects or something. I mean, that, there is some level of, of value to having those in there. And it means that you are being relied upon oftentimes by a client. But if it's, yes, I mean, I, I have employees working overtime every week. Right. And by the way, not getting paid because, you know, right. at least yes. here in the U.S., the, the laws are such that yep. most agencies can get away without paying actual overtime pay. You know. That's a problem. You shouldn't be in that state. If you are in a state where the only way it functions is for employees to be working regularly more than 40 hours a week, it means that you are not pricing correctly or you're not resourced correctly. And those things need to be solved sooner rather than later because it will come back to bite you. Yeah. I mean, and think about your own, like, from your own perspective. I mean, I certainly have run the gamut, right? To your point, in my early, early career, I would, you know, if the, if the partner of our profit center was still sitting in her office, even if we didn't have work left to do, we sat at our desk. And sometimes it was nine or 10 o'clock at night because she didn't have a social life. 
she had nothing else to do except work. And so we would sit at our desks and do clips or whatever it happened to be because she hadn't left yet. I remember getting pulled over at two o'clock in the morning on my way home from work once because the, they thought I was drunk. And in fact, I was just so freaking tired because I was working all the time that he was like, the cop was like, I'm going to escort you home because <laughs> you're going to fall asleep at the wheel. Um, so you, you, you start your career that way and you think that that's the way it goes. And then you build an agency that does the same thing because that's the way you think things are done. But I don't know about you, but I'm at a point in my career where I'm like, I don't want to work like that anymore. I don't even want to work 50 hours a week anymore. So if I don't want to do that, how can I expect that my team is going to do that? And, and I'm not resourcing them correctly. So I always, I'm constantly, and we talk about this all the time, you and I, it's, it's all about figuring out, are we priced correctly? Are we charging enough? Are we resourcing correctly? And, you know, there's, there's this whole thing, I think in agency life where you say, well, my, my, mid-managers, my mid-level people have to be 95% billable. Stop focusing on those kinds of things. Like let's focus on getting the work done and ensuring that we're pricing correctly. And if you do those two things, you will not burn your team out. It will not be chaotic. And you will actually find yourself with time where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm not crazy busy. This is great. Right. And look, the, the problem with chaos is that if you're an agency owner, you either become part of the chaos and it's just as stressful for you. Right. And, and yep. that, that I think is yep. the most common, or yep. you find a way to, to normalize things for yourself and the yep. rest of your team is living in chaos, in which case they not only are unhappy, but they're also resenting you because they are seeing that you are not Correct. living that same life of chaos that yeah. they are. Yeah. And so, you know, I, I think it really requires people to, to have that commitment to saying chaos is not good chaos is a problem, and then taking the time to figure out what it is that's causing it for you so that you can start to address it. Because, you know, look, I mean, I have plenty of owners who come to me and say, yeah, it's, you know, it is chaotic. You know, we, you know, people are, they're stressed out, they're burning out. What do I do about it? I, you know, clients won't pay more, you know, and so I, I just don't know what to do. Well, look, if, if clients won't pay you what the work actually costs to execute, then you need to figure out what you can sell to them, yep. if anything, yep. that will. Yep. And if not, the solution is not to continue to provide something at less than the cost that you need to charge in order to have a, a well-seasoned team that is not overworked and also generates the profits that you need in order to have a successful business. Volunteering your services effectively to companies just doesn't make any sense. Stop no, doing it. Not. Stop doing it is right. <laughs> if they won't pay it, you don't give it. Come up with something else to sell. Come up, find a way to give them what they want, but have it take less work. I mean, there's you can you can solve this problem in many different ways. And I've been doing a lot of, of webinars and trainings on annual planning recently. One mm -hmm. of the things we talk about is how you can rescope work as part of that. I mean, you and, and I always talk about the example with you where you not only do it on, a, on an annual basis, but you do it on a quarterly basis with yep. clients to, to yep. rescope the work yep. in order to make sure that it remains aligned. And so, you know, that's one way to solve the problem. The other way is just say, yeah, it's going to cost more to do this. Right. But most agencies I know charge roughly the same amount today that they did five or 10 years ago. Right. Because most agency, particularly small agency, pricing is based on whatever their last agency that they worked at, worked at charged for something. Well, you know, we used to charge $5,000 a month for PR, so we'll charge $5,000 a month for PR. Well, cool. That was 2005. Right. <laughs> and as we you learned, know, that's, that was almost 20 years ago, which is shocking, but yes. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> I was talking with someone the other day and he was, we, we, there were three of us and, and one was my age and one was younger and, and we're talking about Survivor that came up somehow. And I said, oh yeah, I watched the first season, but I never saw it after that. And, and the younger guy said, oh yeah, you know, I started watching in season 19 when I was in college. Oh, jeez. <laughs> great. And the, the guy who was the same age as awesome. me, just, we're just like, no, great. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, look, time passes, but we need to remember that, right? Because right, right. almost everybody that is listening to this is an owner. Almost all of you have 10, 15, 20 years or more of experience. What worked back then does not work now in terms of pricing, business models, anything. All of these things need to continue to evolve. 
And the reason why you have this chaos is because you are trapped in the past in all likelihood. Yep. You're you're running it like that old shop that you used to work at, which was chaotic because that is I mean, I'm not going to, you know, sugarcoat it. That is the culture of the agency industry. And even now in 2023, it is embraced by people, even agencies that are doing well financially. They still will often embrace the chaos. Yep. Stop yep. doing it. Yep. Yep. One of the things that I've noticed of late is and not not necessarily clients of, of ours, but like industry-wide, I'll get emails from people, PR professionals in, in the industry who work at an agency on the weekends. And it happens consistently. And it's, you know, may, maybe they're inviting me to a podcast or I'm writing an article for them, whatever happens to be, but they're working on the weekends. And it's consistent. it consistently happens where there, I get emails from people in the industry on the weekends because it's the only time they have to get the work done. And Every time I do that, I, I see that I'm like, oh my gosh, like the the job of the agency owner is to ensure, in my opinion, to ensure that the work can get done during the week. And if your team is working their weekends to even if it's to do the marketing for the agency, that means you're not resourced correctly. They should not have to work the weekends. Now, there are exceptions, crisis, events, trade shows, things like that. Right. But if they are generally working to your point, if they're working overtime, if they're generally working on their weekends to be able to catch up so that they can go into Monday with, with a clean slate. That's a problem. That's what's creating chaos. And you've got to start with yourself on this, right? You, you need yes. to make sure yes. that as the owner, you are not living a life of chaos yourself. Now that doesn't mean that you can't work weekends, right? Sure. But how do you, how do you think about doing it in such a way where you're not signaling to your team that, that they ought to be doing that too? That's and right. part of that is making sure that you're you're giving them workloads that they can manage within a normal work week at the office or remotely or however you're operating. Yep. But part of it is looking at, at how you're doing things. And so maybe you do work on the weekends, as I do. But maybe you, you pick and choose the kinds of things that you do then so that maybe you're not emailing your employees constantly right. on the weekend. Right. right? So That's you work right. on yes. things that, that don't require that. Yep. One of the things that I, I started doing a number of years ago was I stopped doing most client work on weekends and used Mark. weekends instead for bigger picture, longer term, you know, uh, working on the business kind of things. And so that then also helped to set, you know, good boundaries with clients so that you're not sending them emails over the weekend or and answering then, their emails on the weekend or, yep. or answering their yep. emails on the weekend, which then invites them to continue doing Correct. it. Correct. <laughs> and so yes. there are, there are a lot of little steps that you can take as an owner to begin to erode the chaos culture. Some of them are going to take more time, right? I mean, not emailing yes. on the weekend. That's an easy one. That's a quick yep. fix. And you yep. probably could start doing it right now. Yep. Just as soon as you're listening to this, you can commit. I'm not going to send my employees or clients emails on the weekends, except in emergencies. That's it. Some of them will take longer. Repricing, rescoping work. Those are not overnight. You don't just snap your fingers and say, aha, we're done. You know, we're going to charge you 15% more. <laughs> right. Or we're going to do less work or whatever. But right. but right. now it is actually, as we're recording this, it, you know, we are in Q4. It is a great time to be thinking about how you scope your work for clients in 2024 and how you price that so that it does get you to a place where you can take the chaos away from your team, you know, gradually over the next you know, six to 12 months and, and get to a rational operating level because that's how you will be successful. It's not by just, you know, recruiting people who are okay with the chaos. That's, that is not the answer. <laughs> and, and you need to just, if, if the word chaos comes out of your mouth and there's a smile on your face, it better be because you're talking about the old TV show, Get Smart, and not because you're talking about the work environment at your agency. And I've really dated myself here. So, <laughs> so all, all of you listeners can go Google Get Smart. Get Smart. I'm sure, I'm sure you have never, ever heard of it. I've but, never heard of it. But Chaos was essentially, it was, a, it was a sitcom from the 60s. And it was basically, Chaos was essentially the, the KGB. Um, so, but it was, this is the one where Maxwell Smart had a shoe phone. So if you've ever seen someone pretending to talk on a phone, uh, talk on a shoe, that's where it comes from. That's funny. I didn't realize that. So you end your, your LinkedIn post with this. The trick is to get to the root of the chaos. 
It could be the result of any number of things, including poor expectations, setting with clients, bad pricing, insufficient resources, often due to bad pricing, lack of focus, inefficient management structure, missing processes, or something else. The sooner you can diagnose the chaos, the quicker you can make the changes needed to put an end to it. Yeah, so, I mean, but but it really, it, and I appreciate you reading that. But I, I think the 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 more most important thing is to just recognize that you do have chaos yep. and commit to ending it. Yep. Right. It, it, because if if you if you don't, then all of those other things are just you know they're sort of eh, that, that that'll make me feel good for a few days. But you just have to commit to just no longer accepting it. And when you see another agency owner talking about chaos, don't say, oh, you know, wow, that's I admire that. Right. Because they're successful. You know, don't if you're if you're out there listening to the various agency advisors on YouTube who talk about chaos as if it's just, yeah, it's chaos. And they don't necessarily embrace it, but they they accept it. Right. And 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 accepting it is just as bad. Right. You know, we know this in a lot of other aspects of our lives. When you when you accept a bad thing, it is basically the same as endorsing it. Yep. If you accept the chaos, you are endorsing it. You are saying not that it's just a necessary evil. You are saying you're OK with it. Don't be yeah. OK with it. Don't be OK with it. Yes. Do not be OK with it. So with that, we've taken a slightly chaotic path to get here, but not too bad. I think we it kept bad, some no. decent focus for yes. us. For at us, least. yes. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we certainly mm -hmm. wander in the wilderness quite a bit on this show before we get to our final points. But today, I think we more or less paddled in the same direction towards a successful conclusion. But that will draw to an end this episode of the Agency Leadership Podcast. I'm Chip Griffin. I'm Jenny Dietrich. And it depends. <laughs>